Efforts to get international mediation to solve the Catalan conflict are underway. That is, according to the Catalan Foreign Minister. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. Foreign Minister Arnes Maragall believes that the European institutions and the United Nations would be good mediators for the political crisis between Catalonia and Spain. And so far, his relationship with his Spanish counterpart is far from easy. In a minute, we'll get you the latest dispute between both officials, and we'll also talk about a brown bear causing some trouble in the Pyrenees. Three out of the four heads of the large Spanish-wide parties have recently had to face accusations over their CVs. The People's Party leader's case is the only one in court, but two others were hotter issues today. This as the Catalan minister revealed some discreet work taken out by his cabinet. The Catalan government is discreetly working on getting international mediation to find a way out of the Catalan crisis. This is according to the Catalan foreign minister Ernest Maragall. In an interview today, he said the potential mediators could range from certain countries, European institutions and the UN, to groups of prestigious figures. According to Maragall, Spain might also be seeking mediation, and so he called for dialogue between Madrid and Barcelona. But for the minister, this only means Catalonia will give up the unilateral path to independence in the short term, not necessarily forever. Maragall and also the Catalan president Kim Torra have criticised the Spanish foreign minister in the past few hours. This comes after Josep Borrell blamed the exiled former Catalan president Carlos Puigdemont for the jailing of his former ministers. Borrell said the fact that some ministers had moved to Belgium made the judges think that the ones who stayed were greater flight risks. The minister has also recently been criticised by the hardline Unionist People's Party and Ciutadans, in this case for saying he personally would have preferred the jail leaders to have been allowed to remain free while awaiting trial. This weekend will mark 11 months since the first two pro-independence leaders were sent to jail. They are still there along with seven more officials. Also today, the Spanish president, Pedro Sánchez, made his PhD thesis public after he was accused of plagiarism. Meanwhile, the leader of Ciutadans, Albert Rivera, was found to have changed his CV in the past few years. He also claims to be a doctoral student at a Barcelona university on his party's website, something that the centre has denied. Carles Puigdemont's PDCAT party might be leaving the Liberal group in the European Parliament soon. The Catalan pro-independence force, led in Brussels by MEP Ramon Tremosa, is considering breaking up with the ALDE group over its stance in the Catalan issue. Another option is for PDCAT to be expelled for being involved in a corruption scandal. Their relationship has gotten worse in the past few years after one high point in 2016 when the then President Puigdemont met a delegation of Liberals. That year, the Unionist Ciudadans party joined ALDE, which also had an impact on PDCAT's relationship with the Liberals. Tomorrow marks 10 years since the Lehman Brothers firm fell in the USA, an iconic point in the latest economic recession. And today, a decade on, we learned some encouraging figures from Catalan economy. The country's GDP grew by 3.1% in the past 12 months, keeping with its upward trend, according to the Catalan Statistics Authority. That means four-tenths more than Spain and also more than the EU average at 2.1%. Industry is one of the sectors contributing to the growth, as well as construction. Both fields have had 4-5% to more investment in the second term of the year compared to the first one. Earlier this week, we told you about some reports accusing a Catalan world-class researcher of hiding financial ties influencing his work. Because of that, leading breast cancer doctor Josep Baselga has stepped down as chief medical officer at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. He omitted having earned millions of dollars from drug and health companies in recent years when publishing research articles in prestigious publications. Catalan and Spanish are the official languages of Catalonia, along with a minority tongue only spoken in a valley quite isolated in the old days. It's called Aranese, and its speakers have headed for the European Parliament to fight for its future. Dunques, que Aranese irá nuestra identidad y volem que sigue vivo en nuestro país. What you've just heard is Aranese. If you think it sounds familiar, you're right. 
It's a variety of the Occitan language, spoken in the picturesque and beautiful Val d'Aran, in the northwest corner of Catalonia. And it's quite closely related to Catalan. An Aranese traveled far from home this week, all the way to the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Here, the delegation of the Aranese Academy of the Occitan Language denounced, quote, abandonment and ignorance of the language by the Spanish government. Aranese is a minority language spoken by fewer than 10,000 people. It's thought to have stayed alive this long partly due to the geographical buffer the Val d'Aran benefits from, but something that this might not be enough in the 21st century. While it's spoken in Monaco, France, Italy and Catalonia, Occitan was granted the status of official language only in the last country. Moreover, it was given linguistic preference, meaning that out of the three official languages in the valley, administrations, public media, education centers and more, hold the option to use Aranese at will. Or hurled, rather, because earlier this year the Spanish Constitutional Court banned the preferential use of the language in the Val d'Aran. And without preferential treatment, warned officials at the European Parliament, this variety of Occitan might not be able to stay alive. Still in the Aran Valley and other areas of the Catalan Pyrenees, a brown bear is causing trouble there. This has been one of the main topics of discussion in the area and it isn't an easy one to sort out. Brown bears are among the most magnificent inhabitants of the Catalan Pyrenees. Hunters left them on the verge of extinction in the 80s, but the reintroduction of the species has been fruitful. Today, over 40 specimens roam this mountain range bordering France. But one of them is causing some trouble. His name is Goyat. He was brought from Slovenia two years ago to face Pyros, the only alpha male for almost two decades. But to some, the cure has been worse than the disease. Shepherds complain that Goyat is killing livestock. According to Catalan government figures, he is responsible for killing 22 sheep, a goat and eight horses, which account for a high percentage of all bear attacks. Depend la data que fem el calcul, podem atribuir al Goyat entre un 30 i un 40% dels danys que s'han produït, que hi ha una intensitat depredadora anòmala. Shepherds are demanding that Goyat be removed from the Pyrenees, but ecologists say the bear is not the one to blame. Instead, they accuse shepherds of ignoring security recommendation, thus handing him the livestock on a silver platter. So, what will the Catalan government do? First of all, They urge all herders to make use of the services available to guarantee the protection of livestock and suggest that the ones who don't might be more interested in getting compensation for the casualties. The Catalan government is currently discussing what to do with other Spanish regions and draft a protocol for problematic bears. Eventually, Goyat is likely to be removed from the mountains and most probably will be put down. We put an end to this week on the Catalan News Show with a unique concert at the Mercata Musica Viva da Vic Festival. It's a combination of classical and electronic music jointly performed by the Pinkertones and the Quartet Brosa. This festival is going on until Sunday, just in case you have no plans for the weekend. Thanks for watching, and see you on Monday.